Good morning, dear students. I am Dr. Arvind Arwal, Assistant Professor at Sage University. Uh, today, we, we will discuss about the uh, bio-organic preparation for organic farming. First, we know about the what is the organic farming. So, organic farming is nothing but it is the agriculture production systems which we can largely exclude the synthetic fertilizers and we uh, used only organic input, uh, whatever we produce on the farms that can be used into the farm is called organic farming. What is the organic inputs? They are the inputs derived from the organic residues and uh, vermicompost, biofertilizers, etc. They are used to the organic farming. They enhance the capacity of the uh, microbial activity and uh, physical condition of the soil and chemical condition of this soil. Now, what is the role of organic inputs? They are improvement of the soil structures. When we used into the soils, they enhance the soil structures like uh, crumbly soils. Uh, second one is the stimulation of the biological activity. The organic inputs in uh, used in the farming, they enhance the water retention capacity of the soils. They provide the uh, successive condition to the tillage and enhance the plant health. Why organic input required? Since 1966 come uh, high yielding programs and green, uh, green revolutions, our farmers use of chemical fertilizers without any rule and regulations. That's why our natural resources like soil and water degrading. So we move to the organic farming because in case of organic farming, we use the organic substitute they increase the biological, biological property of the soil, physical property of the soil, and chemical property of the soil. Now, aims of bio-organic preparations. First one is improve soil properties, reduce need for inputs, enhance the environmental health, superior quality of food. Plants are more resistant to the pest and disease as compared to conventional farmings. Improve plant growth and productivity. Now, what is the difference between conventional and organic farming? At this time of agriculture system, chemical farming is called conventional farming. Now we can move to the organic farming because in case of conventional farming, we can achieve the yield high as uh, provide the recommended dose of fertilizer. But in the long term, we inhibit and uh, degrade the soil and natural resources. Ultimately, we lose the sustainability of soil and agriculture so now we move to the organic farming in case of organic farming we use the organic produce into the field that can be uh, uh, that ultimately we can achieve the sustainable growth of the plant as well as the agriculture production system now nutrient management practices in organic farming first one is the crop uh, rotations we apply uh, we rotate the crops season wise but not rotate the field it's called uh, crop rotations and cover crops we uh, growing the cover crops like uh, uh, legumes they protect from the soil and water erosion of the soil uh, they can help to break the resistance uh, help break the intensity of rainfall then come of the drop into the soils they have a less uh, intensity ultimately we can achieve the soil health now addition of compost application of green manurings you know dear students very well about the green manures whatever you can grow on the fields they can incorporate into the soil there are the two types in situ and ex situ now uh, next one is application of crop residues uh, supplemental application of organic uh, organically approved uh, amendments animal manures and use of biofertilizers now, vermicompost. Vermicompost is a product of the decomposition process using various worms, usually red earthworms, to create the mixture of decomposing vegetable or food waste and bedding materials. They enhance the capacity of soils to provide the nutrient into the uh, soil as well as microbial activity enhance and also provide the micronutrient to the crop. Uh, there are the different techniques for the enhanced microbial activity. 
uh, in case of organ farms, they are the different components like green leaf manures, crop rotations, biological management, animal husbandry, biofertilizers, manures. Uh, now we discuss about the conservation trellis. Any trellis systems which, uh, which maintain the at least 30% crop residues on the soil surface is called the conservation trellis. There are the uh, two types of conservation trellis. First one is a zero trellis and second one is a minimum trellis. Now, what is the biofertilizer? Biofertilizer is an organic substance we can use into the soil. They can increase the biological activity of the soil and they fix the nitrogen from the uh, atmosphere into the soil to enhance the growth of the plant. Now, classification of biofertilizers. Biofertilizer have two types. First one is a nitrogen fixing biofertilizer. Second one is a phosphorus mobilizing biofertilizers. Now, nitrogen fixing bacteria for the legumes. First one is a rhizomes. Rhizobium is a <coughs> associate uh, bacteria. They are live into the uh, root, uh, root of legumes. They can fix the nitrogen from the atmosphere and take the energy from the root. They are help to the crop and as well as provide the beneficial hormone to the crop. Now, nitrogen fixing bacteria for the cereals. First one is the azotovector. Azotovector is a free living uh, nitrogen fix, uh, fixation bacteria. They are not dependent to another host. They can survive uh, singly and fix the uh, nitrogen from the atmosphere as well as provide the hormones to the crop. There are the, some important uh, species like Azotovector uh, Crococum, Azotovector agilis, and now Azospirulum. Azospirulum is an associate symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria. It is used into the sorghum and C4 plants. Now, phosphorus mobilizing bacteria. Why to record the phosphorus mobilizing bacteria? Uh, my dear friends, in uh, soil condition, the phosphorus nutrients we apply. About as you apply 100 kg of uh, phosphorus into the soil, they can use only 10 to 20 kg of phosphorus consumed to the uh, consumed by the plant. It means phosphorus use efficiency only 10 to 20 percent of soil. After uh, remaining uh, phosphorus, they are fixed to the uh, soil. So we use and utilize the phosphorus mobilizing bacteria. Uh, uh, we known as a, we call as a PSM. They are significantly helps in the release of insoluble phosphate and make it available to the plants due to their inherent capacity to dissolve part or fixed phosphorus and make it available to the crop by secreting certain organic acids. Now, advantages of farm inputs. We can achieve the Soil structure, a good soil structure, stimulation of the biological activity, and balance soil ecosystems and uh, uh, delivers nutrient uh, in a slow but sustainable rate for, uh, preventer over fertilization. Now, benefits of biofertilizers. Biofertilizers are eco friendly and do not have any ill effect on soil health and environment. They help in better nutrient uptake and increase tolerance towards drought and moisture stress. Secret some fungi stat uh, static and uh, antibiotics like substance, which reduce the incidence of the various soil borne disease. Now, there is some picture of liquid biofertilizers. And thank you, my dear friends. Stay tuned and subscribe to Sage University Bhopal.